What's up, everybody, and happy Sunday, January 10th. I hope that everyone is doing well today. I pray that everyone is having a good day and having a good weekend so far. I wanted to provide you with another economic stimulus update. As I promised in my live video yesterday, I wanted to give you an update on Joe Biden's plan for economic stimulus as he enters the White House in the next couple of weeks. And I also wanted to give you some insight on how I feel about that plan. Will it be passed? The current economics in our economy right now with the unemployment rate that is driving more economic stimulus and some of the data that came out on Friday, as well as answer some questions for you that I am receiving or some frequently asked questions that I am receiving on my YouTube videos. So please stay tuned. I'm going to cover all of that coming up next. The price tag will be high, but as I said, made scant reference to in my opening comments, the overwhelming um, uh, consensus among the leading economists, left, right, and center, is that in order to keep the economy from collapsing this year and getting much, much worse, we should be investing significant amounts of money right now. And I'm going to play the video for you of um, President-elect Joe Biden giving his insight as to how this new multi-trillion dollar stimulus bill will play out. Stay tuned. We're going to talk about all that next. My name is Paul Zachary Shelton Jr. and I'm the Chief Investment Officer of Warwick Shore Advisors. We are a wealth and investment management firm located in Orlando, Florida with clients all across the United States. If this is your first time coming to my channel or seeing one of my videos, I ask that you please hit the subscribe button. Please ring the bell so that you can get an update each time I post a new video. And lastly, but not least, please hit the like button. Please give it a thumbs up to help me increase the financial literacy of our globe. That is my goal. So let's jump right into today's topic. As promised, Joe Biden on the campaign trail said that he's going to provide more economic stimulus and that the stimulus that we just received, that $600 um, um, per individual, that $900, bill, $900 billion stimulus plan was just a down payment for something to come. So he did unveil on Friday, or at least he gave us this, some of the early details on Friday as to what he is planning and what he has on his mind for the next economic stimulus plan. Um, he did mention that, you know, there are so many people that are hurting right now um, and facing evictions and facing foreclosures. So we're expecting to see something in there regarding those moratoriums. Um, we did have a significant, significant um, drop, I should say, or a reversal in the unemployment data that was released on Friday. We have been having significant job gains ever since the plateau of jobs losses in the early part, I should say in the middle of 2020. But as of December, the month of December, the month we typically see a lot of new hires and jobs for seasonal workers. We actually lost 140,000 jobs across our economy, which is very, very significant. With that being a backdrop, I think we're going to see something extended or at least some more um, federal unemployment insurance added with this next stimulus bill, at least an extension through there, possibly through the end of 2021. Lastly, he is proposing $2,000 worth of stimulus checks to be sent out to individuals. So I'm gonna play the video for you and so you can kind of get the flavor of exactly what he has on his mind and what he is proposing and if it will get passed through Congress or not. Parts of that package are of equal consequence to people. Unemployment insurance, being able to uh, continue with rent forbearance, uh, the whole, whole range of issues. Um, and uh, so that's number one. I, we think that they all have to be dealt with. The price tag will be high. But as I said, made scant reference to in my opening comments, the overwhelming um, uh, consensus among the leading economists, left, right, and center, is that in order to keep the economy from collapsing this year and getting much, much worse, we should be investing significant amounts of money right now to grow the economy. 
and that's a pretty wide consensus. And uh, as you know, uh, Moody's had done an analysis of what I originally had been talking about and said that it was necessary to keep the economy from going down. It is necessary to spend the money now. The answer is yes, it will be in the trillions of dollars, the entire package. But it will be, I'll be here next Thursday laying out in detail how that package is going to go. But the basic story is simple, that if we don't act now, things are going to get much worse and harder to get out of the hole later. So we have to invest now. Secondly, we're going to have to meet the emergency needs of the American people. I mean, literally, I know you know this, uh, Ken, that people are having trouble just putting food on the table, just having to stay, keep the payment of their car, maybe able to turn the lights on. There's a dire, dire need to act now, purely out of what is a humanitarian need here at home. And thirdly, we're going to, in the third stage of this, the whole story is we're going to have to invest, as I suggested throughout the campaign, in infrastructure, in health care, and a whole range of things that are going to generate good-paying jobs that will allow us to grow the economy. So that's a long answer to your short question, which is that the idea of, with interest rates as low as they are, with the Fed having had its power sort of taken away in terms of what they could do to help this administration like last, it's important across the board, every major economist thinks we should be investing in deficit spending in order to generate economic growth. So after releasing this information, he did receive immediate pushback from fellow Democratic Senator um, Manchin, who said that $2,000 per individual is not something that he's looking forward to that would equate to another $400 billion worth of stimulus money that we would be adding on top of the already $27 trillion worth of debt in this country, which is significant. That's a lot of debt. We are in a point where we need the economic stimulus, so it's kind of a catch-22 from that standpoint. As it is right now, um, the, the Democrats hold the House of Representatives, it holds the White House, and it will be you know, holding the Senate at a 50-50 tie with the vice president being the tiebreaker. However, if there is one Democrat that does not push forward with the plan and, and votes nay, along with the 50 Republicans that are expected to vote nay, then it looks like the plan will hit some snags. However, given the economic backdrop of our economy right now, I do believe that something will be passed and it more than likely will be more than the $600 that we just received. It will more than likely be in the range of $1,200 to $2,000 worth of payments. So please stay tuned for that. I will make sure to give you more updates on Thursday as this plan is being unveiled. So I did want to answer a question that I received in one of my recent videos and give you kind of an update and some guidance on this because I believe this may be an issue that a lot of people may be suffering from and a lot of people may have. So the question was regarding how do I um, claim the stimulus payment for my dependent child when I do not have a requirement to file a tax return. So many people do not have to file a tax return if you do not have the income status that requires you to do so. Um, in this situation, I believe the individual did receive the economic stimulus payment for themselves. They just did not receive it for the dependent child. So there could be a couple different reasons as to why this took place. For one, um, it could be very possible that that dependent child um, may have increased in age and is no longer meets the requirements um, like they may have done historically back under the CARES Act. If a birthday has come and they are now over the age 17 and older, that may have disqualified them from receiving the economic stimulus. Second thing, is it possible, and it could be possible, that someone else may have claimed that dependent on their tax returns and they receive the economic stimulus payment for that individual. As we all know, when the CARES Act was passed, um, most of the tax returns had not been processed already. So if someone filed their 2019 um, tax returns and it was not processed until after the CARES Act money was disseminated, it's possible that that individual may have claimed that dependent on the taxes that filed those tax returns, thus you're not receiving a payment for them this go around. 
Another scenario could be potentially if the child is young. Um, it could be a scenario where the IRS does not recognize that this dependent exists under your dependency. So you could be in a similar situation that is similar to me. I had a child last year. Um, he's currently four months old as of right now. So the IRS does not recognize him as my dependent as of yet. But when I file my taxes for 2020 coming up soon, I will add him as a dependent under my tax returns, thus giving the IRS notice that I should get a little bit more in the economic stimulus. So either one of these situ situations or scenarios could be a reason why you did not receive the stimulus payment for that individual. So how do you fix that? Unfortunately, the enter my information tool on the IRS get my payment is no longer functioning as of right now. Um, I do foresee that it will come back online if there is another stimulus plan that is passed that is more comprehensive, but as of now, it's not available. So your option is to file a tax return. Now, you don't have the requirement to file a tax return, so how do I do that? You can file a free tax return um, through the IRS's free file program. It's a program that allows you to file a tax return for free and it's set up for different people. I believe you have to have an income of $72,000 or less to be able to use the free file tax um, program. But you can go on, file a, a free tax return and file that RRC, which is that refund rebate credit. That will notify the IRS that one, your dependent exists and you did not receive any economic stimulus for that dependent. Now, I would advise that you keep a copy of any documentation of the amount of economic stimulus that you did receive. It's going to be very important that you have this information when you go to file your taxes and claim that RRC credit. Additionally, I will put the, um, the link to the free file, um, IRS free file form, or at least the web area on their website in the description of this video. So if you have any questions about that, please see the description of this video. As always, please leave your comments. I do my best to get to those comments, answer as many questions as possible. And lastly, if this is your first time coming to my channel or seeing one of my videos, I ask that you please hit the subscribe button. Please ring the bell so that you can get an update each time I post a new video. And lastly, but not least, please give me a thumbs up. Please like this video to help me increase the financial literacy of our globe. Thank you so much. Have a great day. God bless and happy Sunday.